thank you so much for agreeing to take the call, Momo Niku, all the way in the UK. Um, thank you, thank you. It's an honor because we have actually studied uh, together before during our bachelor's at the University yes. of Deista, Deista University. And now yeah. we also found ourselves in the same evening scholarship, but now yeah. uh, different cohorts. So for someone who doesn't know you, could you just introduce yourself and then we can continue. Okay, uh, thank you for having me. As you said, my name is Mumo Liku. Uh, I am a evening a scholar at the moment. I'm also uh, born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. And here studying in the UK, studying at the University of Reading. I'm doing an MA in Creative Enterprise. So basically what that is, it's basically a mashup of three different things together. So that is film, which is what I love to do. Uh, it also brings together a bit of law, so in, about intellectual property. And then it also brings together the business aspect of, um, of film. So, you know, once you've made your films, where do you take them? How do you make money from them? So uh, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's fantastic. And now we can see like a lot of Kenyans and Africans right now, we are championing to tell our own stories. So you you to be an asset when you come back. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I do hope so. <laughs> Tell us, how did you um, find yourself at Reading? Where did this drive to want to study abroad come from? Or did it just, you know, happen? Just take me through that. Just a bit of background about me. I uh, went to a GCSE school. And, you know, back then it was the buzz that people go to the UK, they go abroad for university. Um, but no, my folks were like, ha, ah, they just looked at me and laughed. And they're like, number, the first degree, it has to be at home in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I knew that uh, what, if I wanted to do my master's, then I'd get to do it uh, abroad in the UK. And that has always been the plan for uh, me and my siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, so once I graduated from Daystar, I worked for around five years um, mm -hmm. within the TV and film industry where I got to like grow uh, and make different networks there. And uh, it came a time I was like, by the way, I've been working for five years. I think I need a break. And so this was the perfect time. I'd thought to first actually come to school last year, uh, mm -hmm. but things didn't work out. Mm -hmm. I applied actually for the evening scholarship in 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. And honestly, I'd say that was all my fault because I think I saw the application two weeks to the closing date. And so you know how you just start to write and you write very quickly and trying to get everything together and then you send. Mm -hmm. And after the wait period, I received an email oh, sorry, we had too many applications, you didn't qualify. Mm. And I was like, okay, maybe this is not my time. Mm -hmm. And so the following year, which is now last year, 2019, mm -hmm. uh, I saw that two of my friends, that is you and mm -hmm. uh, Brian Osweta, had received the, the same scholarship. Um, and also one of his other friends uh, had also uh, applied to do the same course that I wanted to do, which is film. Uh, and he was here as well. So I was like, this is my opportunity. And since I know people who have gotten this uh, opportunity as well, I need to make great use of that. Yeah. And so I contacted Brian Osweta. Uh, I also remember I contacted you mm -hmm. and I was just asking you guys questions about, okay, so what's the scholarship? How is it? Even before I'd definitely gone through the website and read everything that they had there, but mm -hmm. also it was good to have, you know, that um, talk from your friend mm -hmm. because they've gone through the process. They know it very well. Mm -hmm. You know, they know the ups and the downs mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Brian actually walked me through it. I did, I wrote my essays. This time around, I would say I started very early. <laughs> I started to prepare myself very early. I think like two months in advance, Mm -hmm. uh, so I even watched YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. uh, I watched your YouTube videos. I watched some YouTube videos from some Nigerian, uh, uh, com uh, some Nigerian guys from the community, the Chivin mm -hmm. community, which mm -hmm. were very, very helpful mm -hmm. in terms of just preparing you psychologically uh, for what what's to come, what the road looks like. You know, in terms of uh, the mock interviews and all that, and even how to prepare your essays. Mm -hmm. So that was the journey. Um, and I'd say it was a back and forth. So I'd write my essays uh, and then I'd send them to Brian. He'd look through them. 
he'd send them back and tell me, okay, this is what I think you need to change mm -hmm. here and here. Um, also, uh, I sent to one of his other friends who was also doing film. And yeah. he is also that gave pages? Me, that is pages. Ah, Peter pages is <laughs> this is the network, I tell you. And it was so funny because he, he was doing actually the exact same course that I had applied for, mm -hmm. uh, which is... Uh, international film business at the University of Exeter. So I applied to the two courses in the two different schools. And so he had gotten that uh, course. And so I was just talking to him about his experience there and trying to figure out between Reading and Exeter, where should I go? And you know, it, it was a great help because I got to really understand um, the courses and what they entail. Yeah. And so after all the back and forth and sending, then I sent out my um, application and now it was just to hope and pray and wait and so i received uh i received an email telling me oh you've made it through round one and i was so excited mm -hmm. so now it was to start preparing for the mock interviews yeah. and so here i had to prepare and one of the things that i am very thankful for is also my family because mm -hmm. my mom and my sister actually took me through mocks like where we'd come and sit down and you know we'd look like it's an actual interview setup mm -hmm. i have to dress up mm -hmm. i have to look the part and be ready for it mm -hmm. and so uh i'd come in and uh do the interview and after that they tell me okay you did very well here this is what you need to improve on mm -hmm. and it was a great experience mm -hmm. so my brother also know. was my mock interviewer so I oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so i i know you know the the the, the feeling of the tension yeah. and how it relieves tension. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I liked about it because by the time I was going for my interview, I felt like I was ready, like I'd prepared. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't as scared as the first time when I did the first mock. Uh, I always, so, always try and tell people mock interviews are yeah. important. It boosts your yes. confidence. It helps Definitely. you just to know if your, your answers are quality or you're just gibberish, you know. And exactly. Yeah, on my website, sintekimola.com, there's a whole sample um, question list that people yes. can use now because I really want to be able to give back in that way. All right. That's continue. really amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, guys, make sure you go and check that out. Like, it's really important to prepare you uh, for the journey. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, um, I finished the mock, I went for the interview. Uh, you know how you always leave thinking, oh, I could have said this, I could have added that. But all in all, it was a great interview. I really uh, enjoyed the panel. They were very engaging. And now it was time for the, the wait, as they say. The, the months where you wait to hear whether you've gotten it or you've not. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I was waiting, uh, Brian would also check up on me and be like, have you had anything? I'm like, not yet. And then I got the message uh, that I'd been put on the short list. Huh. Uh, yeah, so this was a time of now more waiting to see whether, uh, sorry, the wait list actually, yeah. to see whether I'd, I'd, I'd get it or not. Mm -hmm. And so Brian kept on telling me, ah, just have faith. You mm -hmm. will get it. You will get it. Because sometimes you find that people also, as they do this, they don't fully prepare till the end mm -hmm. in terms of, you haven't done your English exams. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have all uh, the, un the unconditional offers mm -hmm. that you need. Or sometimes different circumstances just come up and you just can't take up the opportunity anymore, mm -hmm. which, which has happened, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So I waited and I remember I was at, uh, I was, I'd gone shopping uh, and I was in the car waiting and I just looked at my phone and was like, I said, today I haven't looked at my emails. It was a Friday uh, <laughs> evening. And I just opened up my emails and I just saw a message just written evening. I was like, oh gosh, you know, that moment. <laughs> so I just opened it. And you know, the first word I just saw was congratulations. <laughs> exactly. I was like, Wah! and I was alone. I was like, there's yeah. no one here to celebrate with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just started making the calls and just yeah. telling my family and everyone. And it was just an amazing, amazing moment and um, an amazing journey of faith. Actually, yeah. that's what I'd say. Faith. It was an amazing journey of faith because sometimes you look at the things that you've done and you think that you're not qualified enough for it. Mm -hmm. But then if you just have the faith, uh, you know, things do come through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was, mm -hmm. that was my, my evening uh, 
journey so far. Yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. And I, I you know you you mentioned something very important: the waiting yes. period. You still yes. have to be you have a game face on. Like you know what? That's true. Still, this is my thing. I'm going to get it. For me, exactly. every time an email would come and it starts with C, yes. <laughs> my heart just. Your heart. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps a bit yeah, of jumps. I know. <laughs> then you're like, ah, this is something else. Ah, this yeah. is something else. And then finally, you get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You get it. Yeah. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I really do appreciate and I'm so happy for this yeah. opportunity. It's, mm-hmm. it's a really amazing opportunity. You, yeah. you touched on how um, you were able to use your networks. Uh, your yes. friends you mentioned me, or sweater, and also pages yes. as well. Pages, yes. So, um, for you, why do you think um, networking is is important, and young people should be able to to just cultivate relationships with people beyond mm. their circles, or even just utilize the people around them? Okay, um, I, I think even that word that you just use, relationships, that's like a key aspect of networking i think uh according to me because it's not just about looking at it from what can i gain from you know this person or these people that i'm you know interacting with it's more of a relationship that you build uh such that you guys are there for each other and also through networking i'm very sure it builds your confidence to be able to talk to people, to interact with, you know, different types of people that you come across in your day-to-day life and sometimes even within networking, it's not just about what I'll gain, like I said, but these relationships, sometimes d- down the line, you know, it may be, you may be doing a certain project or doing something that is important to you and you remember, oh, by the way, I met someone, yeah. so-and-so who does this, who I think can be important. Mm-hmm. And also, it can help you link even your friends to these kinds of networks mm-hmm. for different things that they are doing in their life. Mm-hmm. So I think it's, it's, really, it's really important for that mm-hmm. and the opportunities that you get just by meeting new people uh, are, are really immense and important. And you can never prepare, be overly prepared for that. You know, it's something that's really great to look at and always good to try and meet, meet new people in different settings, yeah. people who are in different um, areas of study, for example, different areas of work, uh, different areas of things that you like, uh, yeah. So I think it's really, really important for young people to do that. Mm -hmm. And it will have a great and immense impact on your life because also it gives you this sort of support that, you know, in case I'm doing a certain thing, I know I have backup. Mm -hmm. I know who to call for a certain thing that's needed. And I think uh, one of the things that I also learned was even from Daystar, like if you just look at the Daystar, it's a community, it's a people like it's relationships that we formed because mm-hmm. here we are down the line how many years later yeah. like we're still talking we still interact yeah. you know uh the people that i've mentioned like uh brian Osweta, we mm-hmm. were in school together yeah. so all your networks mm-hmm. uh, even from campus even from primary school you know there are people who will help you throughout your life yeah very true yeah and yeah. young people shouldn't be, we shouldn't be, because I'm in that category, we shouldn't be yes. afraid <laughs> to reach That's out true. to people. Because, yes, there's the networking that happens on social media, which is very important. Yes. And um, yes. I was able to interview someone else, Stephen Mashua, and he okay. uses his platform just to engage um, the young people if, if it's politically or with something to do yes. with youth development. But another yes. thing that we, we, we saw was the interaction person to person thing mm, will not mm. be discounted as well we shouldn't be yeah, able to true. talk to people because people are human we exactly that's that. the thing yeah mm. at the end of the day we're all we're all humans and you know we all interact the same and we're just like yeah. we are social beings you know we like to uh, interact with other people mm. so mm. for young people just don't be afraid don't be afraid to uh to reach out to people and just interact with them a network yeah. it's it's really important very, yeah very true. okay so now you got yourself you found yourself in the uk how has <laughs> your experience been as an international student five years um, later you know you are like oh hey, I'm not in school <laughs> i know <laughs> it's like first first of all it's you get here you're in a new country you're in a new continent you know, uh, it's you're back to school. Like 
I've been away for five years. So it's like all these things hitting you at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and you need to like find your footing very fast because the one year masters like goes very fast and everyone keeps on telling you that, but it never really sinks in mm-hmm. until you arrive, yeah. you know? So that's one of the things that for me, I was like, oh yeah, three months later, uh, we are getting to the end of the first semester. I'm like, now is when I'm feeling settled, mm-hmm. you know? And within no time, uh, now we are, we're now talking, it's May. Yeah. I'm nearly done with school, you know? So time mm-hmm. goes really, really fast. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that I liked about being away is that it helps you to grow, to grow as a person, because then you get to meet so many new people from different, different places, yeah. from different countries, different con- continents, different cultures, mm-hmm. you know, and you get to just understand people on a different level than mm-hmm. uh, if I'd just gone to school uh, still in Kenya mm-hmm. or maybe even in East Africa. Mm-hmm. You know, I've, I've gotten to meet uh, people that are from various backgrounds, uh, countries that are, you know, going through good economic times, countries that are in war. And, you know, you just see people's experiences and how mm-hmm. different they are. And it helps you to, first of all, um, to appreciate where you come from, but also appreciate where they come from as well. So it's like an amazing, amazing time. Yeah. And just like right now it's summertime and i am so happy it is summertime <laughs> because the sun is out <laughs> when yeah, i got here the cold, oh gosh the cold was like crazy because <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm not a person who likes cold weather and so yeah. uh trying to adjust to winter and experiencing winter i think it was a good thing um mm-hmm. and i do appreciate it so yeah I think my time here has been has been really good. Also trying to travel a bit, you know, to see new places, yeah. uh, um, try uh, new places within the UK, but also outside of the UK. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, right now, even because of the pandemic, mm-hmm. uh, it's a bit difficult to move about. And all my um, my summer plans may be put on hold for the moment. But I mean, even after things, the lockdown is over in the UK. I, I hope. I hope to be able to travel uh, within within the UK and see more of the UK. Yeah. yeah. You'll do it. You'll do it. Don't worry. Yeah. So um, you're now studying an MA in creative enterprise. Yes. What maybe were some of the aha moments you found from the course that okay. never hit your mind while, you know, while you were going about in your film production stuff? Yeah. And... Um, some of the maybe tips you think some young people who are involved in the creative space can implement just from what you're okay. learning. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think one of the things I learned when I came here, which is different from what is back home, is that there's more emphasis on um, this critical thinking and critical thought in terms of even films, mm-hmm. because I, most people look at films as, oh, just that thing I watched when I'm, you know, uh, chilling at home and just uh, trying to get something to do when I'm doing nothing. But then when it comes to films, like all the films that we've been studying, there's a lot of critical thought that goes into the making in terms of the storyline itself, but also in terms of uh, the kind of shots they use, the kind of music, the kind of uh, wardrobe, all these things. There's a lot of critical thought and critical analysis of what do these things mean? How, if I use for example, this color of uh, this shade of color mm-hmm. on someone's clothing, uh, maybe a red instead of a maroon. What will it mean? You know, it's the little subtle things that uh, I've learned, and it's made me. It's opened up my eyes into um, a different way of filmmaking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, secondly, I think the business aspect has also been a big thing mm-hmm. because, in as much as we make good and great films in Kenya, which I think we really do, mm-hmm. uh, how are we marketing them in an, in, at an international level? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like more, more filmmakers and more Kenyan, young Kenyan filmmakers, as they start off, that's what they need to start looking at mm-hmm. in terms of how, how can I reach the world? And it's, it's also fine to start uh, with Kenya and then slowly grow to East Africa, to Africa and to the world generally, because mm-hmm. I believe sometimes it could be difficult to, you know, start from Kenya to the world. But yeah. then at least if you start and grow 
um, slowly and you'll definitely get there. So those are some of the things that I've, I've learned mm-hmm. um, that have really opened up my mind uh, yeah. into the kind of uh, films that I can make, but also paired with uh, the previous things we've been talking about, the networking mm-hmm. uh, has really come into play because uh, the, the films and the projects we've been doing are very, um, they're very interlinked with, our, with the people within your class. So mm-hmm. you get to help each other and do a lot of things together. So for example, uh, I have my own film, someone will help me to, uh, to direct it. I'll direct it, sorry, and someone will help me to produce it. Mm-hmm. Someone else will help me get cast. So it's very, you get to work and collaborate with people very well. Mm-hmm. And this is something great that I've, I've been learning and seeing it even from a different perspective mm-hmm. uh, than what we do back home. So mm-hmm. I think that's been, that's been a great experience. Yeah. So it sounds very practical if you've been making the film. Huh? Yes, yes. It's been very, it's a, been a very practical, um, practical course. But then also they, they married the two, the practical part and also the theory. So mm-hmm. we also have a couple of classes uh, around film and, you know, film aesthetics, uh, world cinema film and mm-hmm. all these different courses that we've been doing, which have been mm-hmm. really, really fantastic. Ah, cool. So curiously, yeah. for your dissertation, are you doing a film or you're doing like <laughs> a written? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a very, very good uh, question because actually I am to have a, a meeting with my tutor this week to discuss that same point. Because uh-huh. uh, originally, uh, before uh, the whole corona situation, mm-hmm. I was to shoot a film and I wanted to actually shoot it in Morocco. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a story about my, my central theme for this film is mig- immigration and migrants yeah. and um, the whole story of uh, people coming or moving from Africa to Europe in mm-hmm. search of better lives, mm-hmm. you know. So that's, that was my, that's my central theme. Mm-hmm. And so now that uh, the situation is here and, you know, there's, there's been, we're not able to move around and we're not able to travel, then I need to either figure out a different way to go about it, mm-hmm. either shoot here and, you know, sort of, in our sense, pretend that yeah. it's Morocco, yeah. or I could go the written dissertation way. Mm-hmm. So this is something that I'm still, I'm still figuring out. Yeah. Hopefully, um, in the next one, one to three weeks, I'll, I'll have a more clear, clear way of how to go about it. Yeah, well, all the best yeah. I know when it comes Thank to you. <laughs> and the planning things yeah. are the ones which give you the headache. <laughs> exactly that's true so thank you i will i will take all <laughs> all the good good vibes possible <laughs> to and make sure that right, uh, okay. if it's a film we'll be here the community will be here to to watch it yeah <laughs> definitely i will make sure if i'm able to do a film i'll make yeah. sure to share it uh, so that people can watch it can critique it i'm always happy to uh, get feedback about what people think about my film while you, you were in Kenya, you already started yes. your own production, right? Um, yes. Maybe as a young person who started your own company, you, you followed your passion, this is what I wanted yeah. to do. How do you go about maybe um, giving us tips on how to approach clients, to approach mm-hmm. people for funding? Um, okay. For young people who are in the creative space and are wondering how do I do that? And I'm just okay. me, myself, and I, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think I started, I started my company back in campus, actually. And uh, it started with a good friend of mine, Ian Wafula, who now went into uh, a different uh, area. I pursued film, but he pursued more journalism. Uh, and so we started the company in campus. That's in 2012, actually. <laughs> and uh, it was those, as they call them, the campus room dormitory uh, you know, startups. Yeah. And uh, we used to just do uh, photography and video for school events. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all, all the, uh, what, what was the event called? Was it Soya? Soya. Uh, Soya. Exactly. <laughs> those ones. We used to uh, those uh, shoots during that time and uh, just random shoots for uh, individuals who just wanted nice photos to use for their profiles, their Instagram and whatnot. Um, so that's where we began. And I decided to continue with, uh, with the company uh, thereafter. And the biggest thing actually is 
clients, finding clients is mm-hmm. always a, a headache as you start mm-hmm. uh, because you have, you have, you don't have the experience uh, and that's what you're starving and trying to look for. But yeah. then the clients don't want you to give, don't want to give you the job because you don't have experience. Mm-hmm. So it becomes like a big clash. Yeah. Um, and so you, you find that you have to do a couple of pro bono, um, mm-hmm. pro bono shoots yeah. and pro bono work just mm-hmm. so that you can create uh, the portfolio for yourself, which in the beginning, I'd say, guys, don't, don't mind doing them. Like they are there to help you. They'll help create that portfolio that you do need to be able to get the jobs that are paying. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'd say maybe do five, six pro bono jobs, you know, uh, create that portfolio. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you also now, because in the time you're also uh, building your skills. Yeah. Uh, and when you get to a certain point, you'll know, okay, I've built my skills. I no longer need exposure because I have yeah. gotten it. <laughs> you yeah. know, because some, sometimes you find clients want to pay you with exposure. Yeah. And I'm sure this has been talked about so many times, mm-hmm. but it's, it's the reality of our industry, mostly, mostly in the creative industry. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to pay you in that form. But I think you also need to be able to be bold enough to walk away from certain, um, certain jobs and certain clients, uh, which is something that I also had to learn um, over the years, mm-hmm. saying, this is what I'm offering. And if you think that you're not able to pay me, then mm-hmm. one of the other things that I used to do is that I'd tell clients, okay, for this first job, don't pay me. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're still unsure about, um, about my work, mm-hmm. don't pay me right now. Mm-hmm. Let me do the work. Mm-hmm. Let me finish. And then uh you can see the work that i've done and then you can pay me then yeah. sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah. but i think it's a good way to to go about it mm-hmm. and also one of the things i'd say to young people uh if you know that x amount is the amount it costs for your production work please stick to it yeah. i know sometimes that we are very pressed we need we have bills to pay we have things to do and so a client tells you no I won't pay you X, I'll pay you Y. Yeah. This is the much I can afford. Then it's also okay to be bold enough to say, I'm sorry, this is my cost. This mm-hmm. is how much I can charge. Mm-hmm. And because this builds uh, an industry where uh, clients know that this is how much we can, how much we need to pay for mm-hmm. these services. Because mm-hmm. I feel like uh, the more we lower our rates, the more clients now know that these are the new rates. Yeah. And so, that you know, thing, it becomes... Their charges this amount. Exactly. Why are you exactly. charging this? Why are you charging me more? <laughs> and I think, exactly, that's the point where we need to be bold enough to say, that's fine, Cynthia can charge that amount, but for my services, mm-hmm. for the work that I'll put into it, for the creativity I'll put into it, for the years of experience that I've gotten or the months of experience that I've gotten, yeah. this is my price, you know. And also it needs to be a, a price that is uh, that makes sense well for the number of uh, years or months of experience that you have, you know. So you need to look at it uh, from that uh, perspective. Mm-hmm. And so I'd say for young people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to start your own businesses. Mm-hmm. Actually, right now in Kenya it, and most part of um, Africa, with Rwanda being actually the first... Um, country in Africa where the ease of doing business Mm -hmm. is like really low. You can start a business in literally uh, Mm -hmm. for a couple of hours. You know, Mm -hmm. you can go register your business as a business name if Mm -hmm. you don't have the money to register it as a limited company Mm -hmm. and just start off working. And then with time, you can now move from a business name to a a registered company Mm -hmm. because clients also want to work with people who have a business backing behind them, you know? Yeah. 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 So I think that's what I'd I'd tell young people. Just don't be afraid and also use your networks. Like they're there to help you. Cause I'd say most of the, uh, a large percentage of the jobs that we got in our beginning years were from our networks, Mm -hmm. from people we know, you know, uh, for example, Cynthia, you'd know me, you'd be like, Oh, by the way, I know Mumo who does photography and you'd, help spread the word around, mm-hmm. you know. So that was, that was a big thing to help us. And now um, we are able to, you know, uh, do our own marketing yeah. for, for clients where yeah. we know these are the clients that we want to reach. Mm-hmm. So we even do cold calls. Like, oh. don't, be, don't be afraid of cold calls. Just call, pick up. You're like, hey, this is our company. This is what you do. Whether they want um, 
to, to give you a job or not at the moment, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So after that, then you get their email and you send your company profile. Mm -hmm. It's just like a, a write-up of who you guys are, what you mm -hmm. do, the services you provide, and mm -hmm. just send it to them. Because mm -hmm. you never know. Sometime down the line, they might need your services. And they may remember, oh, by the way, there's some guy who called me mm -hmm. and sent me an email, mm -hmm. you know, and they'd look you up. Yeah. So I think uh, guys shouldn't be afraid to do the the tough work of mm -hmm. even doing these cold calls because yeah. they really do um, help out down the line. Mm -hmm. And um, there's something else you'd asked about. Uh, like what, what's the, the correlation between what you are studying and maybe some of the, I, yes, that we can implement. And, yeah. Mm. Okay. Some, some of the things we can implement. Um, I'd say in terms of, in terms of studying and what I can implement, I think I've, I've learned a lot about, the business, the business area and the business um, side of film. Mm -hmm. So learning how to do, not that I didn't know, but learning a better way of doing um, budgets mm -hmm. and budgeting. Uh, because for me, I work mostly as a producer. So mm -hmm. that's my biggest um, hurdle. How mm -hmm. do we uh, work with budgets? How mm -hmm. do you work with hiring people um, and getting the best people for, for the job? So mm -hmm. I've, I've gotten a whole lot of, information on budgeting on finances you know uh, how to do um how to look at your finances and be able to project for the next five years you mm -hmm. know through the different income streams that you get uh and uh how to make sure that you're able to meet those targets on a quarterly basis these are some of the things that honestly we did not know as you we were beginning uh, in business mm -hmm. and sometimes if you've not been to business school uh, it becomes a bit tough mm -hmm. and so I also did like um, centonomy entrepreneurship mm -hmm. so it's like these other courses that you just do to help you mm -hmm. um, get into business and get in touch with the with the business mind and the business people mm -hmm. and there's a question that you asked also about uh, funding mm -hmm. uh, so at the beginning honestly it all started with our families like my i remember my dad bought me my first camera and mm -hmm. from there he was like okay here this is what i can give you from here now you go and okay. get the rest for yourself mm -hmm. so a lot of uh things came from our family uh, but also then we applied for uh, certain grants because within film uh and most of the creative industry you can get certain grants that uh, will help your business grow uh, for example last year we worked on a project um, called Tembea which was renamed to if objects could speak mm -hmm. and it was a film uh, that talks about um, you know these objects Kenyan and African objects that are in European countries mm -hmm. and whether they should be repatriated to their home countries mm -hmm. and so we were looking at Kenya specifically mm -hmm. and we are able to uh, use this project to apply for grant money and which we did uh, we were successful in getting those uh, the funds which it's a it's a process but then it's also about the idea that you have being able to know that this is a good idea that i have and not being afraid to yeah. apply for these for these grants because the grants are there oh you know? there's money there's so much exactly money there hmm? there's a lot of money out there yeah and people yeah. would um, look into british council the, the yes yes arts Alliance, they do. Alliance Frances, right? Alliance, yes, okay. yes. Institute. Uh, Gote Institute and also uh, Hiva Fund. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people do um, support creative, creative industry uh, businesses. So yeah. not being afraid uh, and also working on your, on your ideas, making sure that by the time you're, you're getting this platform to apply for this grant, you are very sure of your idea it's mm -hmm. concrete you know it's not half-baked like once you go and you present to these funders like any question that they ask you you know it and if you don't know it you you someone within your team yeah. needs to know how to answer it very well so these are some of the things i'd say that young people need to uh to get the same themselves into mm -hmm. just don't be afraid and just do the work that's needed yeah you, can you maybe propose some spaces maybe around Kenya, uh, yes. maybe social spaces or physical spaces okay. that um, can be good for young people who are looking into getting into the creative bit of film, um, where okay. they can be able to maybe interact and find like-minded people? 
Okay. Um, I'd say, first of all, a good place to start would be attending different festivals that take place and also markets. And we have uh, our one and only Kalasha International Film Festival and Market. And the good thing about the market is that it brings together so many uh, of the creative industry professionals. And for example, if you're students, uh, I know, if I'm not wrong, last year and the year before, uh, they had either the tickets were free or they were very subsidized. It was mm -hmm. like, I think like 200 shillings or something like that to attend the market. Because here you'll meet the professionals they have all these talks and workshops mm -hmm. about film about how to make films about how to get funding for your films mm -hmm. about casting like even actors all these people attend this this market and also um, about different uh, equipments to use mm -hmm. and all this so i think that's a, a very good place to start mm -hmm. and also join join the associations mm -hmm. we have the writers guild we have the producers guild mm -hmm. all these guilds are there to help um, help the, the creative industry and yeah. help the industry like just grow. Mm -hmm. So being part of these, um, these I'd say different uh, groups yeah. will help you network and know these people very well. And spaces, the, I'd say spaces like um, creative, uh, creative, is it creative garage? Oh yes. Or yes. Nairobi yes. garage yes. and garage. creative Good. garage. Mm -hmm. They have like spaces, mm -hmm. they really do help. And they, they're always having workshops and events that are tailor-made to the creative industry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. following their pages online on social mm -hmm. media will help you know what they are doing and mm -hmm. any events that are coming on. And like you said, Allianz, uh, Gote Institute, they're mm -hmm. always having different events. I remember last year in, in March, I was helping Gote Institute to uh, put together a workshop. Nice. Uh, for the creative industry, mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, where we brought together animators, filmmakers, uh, you know, different people within the creative mm -hmm. creative industry, uh, mm -hmm. people in fashion, to just have conversations and, uh, you know, be able to network. So mm -hmm. all these groups are there, all these people are there. It's mm -hmm. just about young people just, you know, putting themselves out there. Yeah, yeah you just need to put them, yourself out there. And in the first years, you'll attend a lot of events and sometimes you'll feel like, whew, these are so many, how are they helping me? But with time, like uh, the, the, the fruits will begin to show. Yeah. And yeah, also yeah. let's speak about the role of volunteering because it also okay. plays a critical um, role, I feel, in terms yes. of connecting you to where you want to go eventually. So for yes. example, you see the workshop maybe you are, you are doing Sometimes yes. it's a call for volunteers, like we need someone to maybe um, help with event organizing. Exactly, like exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Actually, during that event, we did have a group of, um, I think there were eight or nine volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, and we sourced them from uh, a university. So we went to a university and we asked them, um, do you, do you have any students who would be willing to volunteer for this uh, for this event? Yeah. Uh, they'd come, and the good thing is that you know they would get uh, free food because you yeah. were serving lunch, and actually, like the whole all the meals uh, yeah. were there. So it's a good place to also be able to volunteer mm -hmm. and to see anything that's uh, upcoming. I also do have and do look for people to volunteer within productions. Mm -hmm. So we do get interns at times uh, to help us with our productions. Mm -hmm. uh, who, it's a good space for them to be able to also learn on the job yeah. because uh, this kind of experience will give you more than just being in school and just being, you know, mm -hmm. just learning in a classroom setting. Yeah. Uh, being there uh, on set will help you learn a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah, because I yeah. remember during my time, so that I knew that me film is not my thing. I actually yes. volunteered. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? <laughs> I volunteered for a certain. Um, it it was like a production house, but run yes. uh, for mission work or missionaries, like spreading the gospel okay. stuff like that. So we actually oh, okay. shot a feature film. So oh, I was nice. a production assistant, I remember. Yes. And I was just like, ah, this takes a lot of time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does. But then being in filmmaking takes yeah. a lot of your time, takes a lot of energy, a lot of willpower. Mm -hmm. You know, the early morning uh, yeah. shoots. Oh, good, and the late nights. <laughs> and the late nights. Yeah. Like, you really need to have that passion mm -hmm. uh, 
to be able to survive in that industry. So yeah, if I yeah. had not volunteered, I would not yes. have known what I yes. didn't like or what That's I true. liked. That's very true, actually. Yeah. So yeah, it's good for guys to get this experience very early, even as you try to figure yourself out. Yeah. Very true. Okay. So um, just before we wrap it up, let's all bring yes. it together. Um, in terms of, of you coming back to Kenya, what, maybe yes. what, what, what are you looking forward to? Or now with the knowledge that you're getting, what do you want to come back and establish or grow more when you're... Okay. Okay. Um, so now that, well, being in the UK, I feel like I haven't left really <laughs> because <laughs> I still, I still, I still... Well, I still have a company back home. Yeah. And so even when I'm here in the UK, I still do help out with some of the things that are taking place there. I may not be there physically, mm -hmm. but like with this new world uh, of digital, uh, you can do your stuff while you're away. Yeah. And so as a company, as my company is called Baru Collective. Mm -hmm. So we've been planning a lot of... Um, a lot of activities within the cultural heritage space. Mm -hmm. And so just uh, trying to uh, document our cultural heritage as Kenya and as Africa in general. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out as young people, because you find that most young people are not in touch with their, with their heritage. You yeah. know, it's like something that's seen as not so cool. And mm -hmm. I don't blame them. Like we grew up watching a lot of American TV and mm -hmm. all these Western um, Western influences on us such that we no longer see our own things as good, as, you know, as good progressive. enough, mm. as progressive, you know, such kind of things. So our main aim is to um, try and get more young people interested in cultural heritage. And so we have a couple of um, things in the works, mm -hmm. I'd say. Uh, we have a TV show that we're thinking about. We have a podcast that we're thinking about that just focuses uh, within this cultural heritage space. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully once I get back, that's what I'll be continuing with. Yeah. So right now we are mostly in the developmental uh, stage, developmental mm -hmm. going to pre-production stage. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm getting back in December, it's, it'll be all gears ready to, yeah. to get going with these things. Yeah, I'll be able to link up with you after so that we can just do a follow-up. On, on definitely how on how things are i would i would really appreciate that yeah. but yeah for the time being now mm -hmm. here in the uk i think it's just to enjoy the rest of my time uh, to enjoy mm -hmm. my dissertation do it to the best of my abilities mm -hmm. and uh, just enjoy being here and um taking in the culture and the people and everything around yeah yeah oh, good um any yeah. final tips in regards to scholarship application opportunities and just yeah. the whole networking bit? yes um i think i just say for the young people guys don't be lazy just get out there do these things they're not difficult they just require a bit of your time mm -hmm. they require um you to be focused on it uh and you can definitely get these opportunities. Mm -hmm. And not only even when it comes to like scholarships and stuff, like there are just numerous opportunities yeah. out there for various things. And some of these, you can even find opportunities on different websites. Like I know there's opportunities for Africans.com. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is, um, what's the other one? I know there are a couple of Yeah, I have a video on that yeah. also. So exactly, go watch exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Guys, go watch that video. Cynthia knows what she's talking about. <laughs> uh, and for us, we're just here to reiterate these things. Like, opportunities are there and people mm -hmm. should just grab them and just run. Run with yeah. them yeah. Uh, because, like, they are there for us. True. So we shouldn't be afraid. And also, I think lastly, is to say, as Africa, as Kenyans, um, let us be who we are, be open and um, to learn new things, but also open to learn even our culture. Yeah. I think that's something that's very important, which mm -hmm. right now I am learning and it's just amazing because mm -hmm. of the research that we're doing, we just get to know so much about our people and the things that used to happen that just opens up your eyes. Um, so yeah, remember just do your research, just learn and just yeah. enjoy learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Momo. You've given us a wealth of information. Thank you no for problem. sharing about your journey. 
<laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And also just showing us the link, like, listen, we are here in Kenya. We're also global yes. citizens and there's so exactly. many that we can still bring back home. Learn yes. and bring it back home. Exactly. So I will be able to link Momo's information down below when we post the video. He'll come yeah. back and answer any questions that are directly linked to him. Thank you. If you watched the video this far, please continue subscribing to the channel, like the video, subscribe, <laughs> and leave yeah. comments. We, we, we are always excited to just read what you're thinking about and answer any questions. And if you think there's a friend who will benefit from this video, share it with them. The share button is there. Share. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Cynthia. And guys, the, the world is your oyster. So, yeah, just do it. Do it and do it now.